I, 35 male, have a younger brother, Dave, 25 male, who was the product of my mother's affair. My mom was very unhappy and made a mistake that she still repents for today, but my father never really forgave her. When she confessed to him that the kid she was pregnant with was not his and promised that she was going to give it up to the bio dad, he forced her to keep it out of spite by saying that it was the only way he would take her back. This created a deep rift within their marriage because he never even appreciated the sacrifice she had been ready to make and held the affair over her head for the rest of his life. He'd been sick for a while now and passed away a few weeks ago. This was all very distressing for us as it is, but everything became much worse when we read the will. Dad left a bit for his sisters and then divided the rest equally between me and Dave. Dave already has a biological father and was never even adopted by my dad. They were close, but mainly because dad had to prove some sort of point to mom. But he was left a huge part of a big estate, while my mom got nothing. We talked to a lawyer who thinks we have a decent chance of overturning the will because of certain circumstances and will definitely try. My mom hasn't worked for years and she was left basically destitute while Dave is going to get an inheritance from his bio dad anyways. So it's not like we're cheating him out of his birthright or anything. It's just extra money for him. I told my aunt my plans and she started acting weird, but I didn't think anything of it. Today we had a family Zoom meeting, including Dave, where everyone piled on me and mom for this and said some terrible things about her. Obviously, I'm considering going no contact with them now, but I want to know, am I seriously an a-hole just for fighting for my mom? You're the a-hole. It's what your dad wanted to do with his money. If you feel this strongly that your mom needs it, give her your share instead of giving away Dave's. Why do you think it's okay to give away Dave's money? You're the a-hole. If it is so important to you to make sure mom is taken care of, you might have first spoken to your brother about how you hope to take care of mom, and maybe you two might have split your amounts to share with her. If not, just take care of your mom yourself. You can do what you want with your money. It just sounds like you are the one that resents your brother for having another dad. You're the a-hole. Dave might not be your dad's biological son, but it sounds like your dad raised him, and your mom did have an affair, breaking her marriage vows to your dad. She chose to get back with him and stay with him, even though it was clear he was still very bitter about the affair. This is a consequence of her choices. I'm a 66-year-old widower, recently retired. My son is 33 and lives seven hours away. Some backstory. Sorry if this seems disjointed. My son was spoiled by his mother who gave him everything he ever wanted, as she believed she was unable to have a child for well over a decade. He was her only son. I was largely absent due to work, construction, that frequently took me out of state. His education and first vehicles were paid for by us, and we also gave him seed money for a small business that he has since repaid. My wife and I each had some extramarital affairs, but worked through them mainly for him. We did not have the best relationship. The three of us moved to another state for my work, and he decided to stay there when my job transferred me. He was about 16 and resides there, but me and my wife moved back to our original state after the job was completed, which was almost seven hours away from him. He and his mother were extremely close. She has been deceased for almost four years. She became ill about five years ago and was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and was her primary caregiver for nine months of her treatment as I had to continue on with work. Close to her death, he contacted my boss and told him I needed to come home, which they agreed. I will not lie, I had been putting it off. I wasn't the most helpful when I was there, and he had to direct me as to what to do. I was still in shock at the events that were unfolding and the appearance of my wife. A pain clinic nurse had been helping my son take care of my wife on her free time for the last few months of her illness, and we became extremely close. We ended up having S shortly after my wife died, and my son walked in on us. I know it was a mistake. He swears it was the day after she died, but I believe it was after her funeral. We've not really discussed the pain nurse events. Recently, I told him that I was likely going to give his half-sister, age 49, my only other child, half of my belongings in the will, and asked if he would be the financial administrator. She is an addict, and he is great with money. Seeing that she has four children and no husband, and he has zero, in addition to a successful business, I felt this was more than fair. He blew up and said that I was giving her 50% of mine and his mother's assets because she left everything to me if I outlived her. His mother would have wanted him to have 100% of her assets. He said he was fine with this arrangement, but that I didn't need to act like he was inheriting anything from me. He did not know he had a half-sister until he was around 24, and they do not get along. Last week, he called me to let me know he would be bringing his boyfriend to Thanksgiving, and I told him I was going on a cruise. 
He asked with who, and I told him a woman. He said that's fine, and made up an excuse to get off the phone. I've tried to call him for the past week, and he has not answered. Today he texted me and said that I do nothing but harm him emotionally, that I am toxic, and to leave him alone. I've since been blocked on every avenue I have of reaching him. I have worked my whole life to make him successful, and he just throws me away. So, I'll say you're the a-hole for Thanksgiving. Sounds like he was trying to spend the holiday with you and was trying to bring his boyfriend, an important person to him, around you. That's a big deal, but you were like, oh, sorry, going on a cruise. I doubt he's so mad at the new woman part and more hurt at you telling him last minute you're going on a cruise over a holiday he had expected to spend with you. For the record, I don't think you're obligated to spend holidays with anyone. Wanting to go on a cruise for Thanksgiving isn't inherently an a-hole move. But if you waited to share that info until he was making plans to bring his boyfriend around, that's a crummy way to find out, on top of all the rest of your history. This has a lot of parts to it, so I'll talk about each one. 1. You wanting to date someone else four years after your wife's death does not make you an a-hole. You don't want to live your life in solitude forever, and your son needs to accept that. 2. Having S with the pain clinic nurse days or weeks after your mother's death. This makes you an a-hole. More likely than not, you were already attracted to the nurse while she was still alive, and you acted once she was gone. That might not be what you were thinking, but that's how your son views it. You waited until she died before having S, so you can avoid any guilt. That's bad, and I don't know if it's possible to have your son forgive you that. 3. Giving your daughter 50% of your assets isn't an a-hole move either. No one owes anyone inheritance, but your son isn't going to accept it, even if your daughter needs the money more, because your daughter is not his concern. He doesn't give two craps about her. To him, you're giving money, his money, and his mother's money to someone he doesn't care about. Also, a quick calculation on your late wife's money. 100% of the late wife's money should go to your son, and 50% of your money should go to your son. So, like, quick math here. Late wife has $100,000 to her name. Your joint account is $600,000. You have $100,000 to your name. $100,000 from late wife goes straight to son. You take $300 out of the joint account and consider that your wife's money, and it goes to your son. Now you have $400,000 to your name, $100,000 plus $300,000. But now you divide that by two, $200,000. So you should be giving your son $600,000 and your daughter 200000 in this specific scenario. Obviously, there are a million different ways to give inheritance, but in my opinion, that would be the fair option. My extremely narcissistic and aggressive ex-husband wants our son to be tested for a donor match because he has cancer in both kidneys and needs a donor kidney. I have several issues with this, and I'm wondering if I'm being a B because if I don't agree to this, he could die if he doesn't find a donor soon. Number one. X wanted me to terminate our son because a five-month amniocentesis showed he might have birth defects. When I refused the termination, he left me. He didn't come back until after son was born with nothing more than a mild hearing loss, mild learning disabilities. Number two, turns out he was cheating during the time he was gone and that he'd been having an affair with a woman, his first ex-wife, for almost the entire duration of his marriage to me, at which time she was also married to someone else. When son was only two months old, the ex packed up and left, and has been with her ever since, although he's never married her. He's actually told me our entire 13-year marriage was a mistake, and that he wishes he'd never met me. Number 3. Son is now 16 years old, and his father hasn't seen him since he was 4, by his own choice. He's always way behind in child support, like $30,000, but could easily afford to pay as he makes a high six-figure salary. Number 4. Son hates his father for abandoning him especially since his father seems to be quite happily parenting his ex-wife kids from her second husband. Although considering the duration of their affair, most of our marriage apparently, I suppose those kids could be his. They are much younger than my son. Number 5. I'm almost 100% sure that if I allow this to happen, the ex will simply disappear from our son's life all over again once he finds out he's not a match, or even if he does match and acts as the donor. Because being out of his only child's life for over 10 years, is pretty much proof to me that he doesn't care about him. And if he doesn't care about us, why the hell should we care about him? Number 6. Kidney cancer actually runs very strongly in my ex-husband's family. His father died of it, his grandfather died of it, and two of his father's sisters died of it, which means it's entirely possible my son will end up getting it as well, which could mean if he only had one kidney left due to being a donor, he'll be in a worse position than his father currently is. 
So am I right to want to protect my child from being used by a father who doesn't care about him? Or am I a B for being willing to let him die by not letting his child be his donor? For your information, I've not told my son about this request, and if and when I do, I have a feeling he won't agree to it at first, but his father could probably manipulate him into it very easily if I allow his father to talk to him, and his father could easily use the court system to force me to let him spend time with our son. Not the a-hole, you're doing what's best for your son. Clearly you have his best interest at heart, and his biological father doesn't. Not the a-hole, you even say your son hates his father. This isn't some selfish revenge on your behalf, not to let him help his father. You're putting your son's benefits first, and rightly so. Not the a-hole. So your ex didn't want him in the first place. He's $30,000 behind in support. He cheated on you for the entire marriage, and he hasn't seen your son since the age of four. Not to mention that there's a history of kidney cancer. For that reason alone, you're not the a-hole. I feel like there's no doctor that would recommend he give away his kidney. My wife Sarah and I got married two years ago after dating long distance for a year. I left my job and moved across the country to be with her. And since then, I've been working in her grandfather Jack's company. We have no children and no prenup. Jack and I became very close. He taught me about business and encouraged me to put up my own. When he died last year, he left me a relatively large sum of money, which he said was to help put up my own business, so I can always take care of my future family with Sarah. He left a separate and larger inheritance for her. I haven't touched the money because after Jack's death, I decided to stay with the company for a few months to help make sure that ownership and management transition went on smoothly. During that time, my life turned upside down after Sarah suddenly admitted to me that she had an emotional affair that almost turned physical with someone very close to me. We are in therapy now to try to fix things. I love Sarah, and I know I have my own faults, but right now I'm not sure that it's working out, and I'm seriously considering if the best thing for both of us is to divorce and start anew separately. If we divorce, I'm not going to ask for any of Sarah's money or properties because it's hers and her family's. But I have a dilemma about the money Jack left me. It's mine legally and will let me have a fresh start when I move back, and I do intend to put up the business that Jack and I talked about. But I know he wanted that business to be the means for me to look after my future family with Sarah, which will not happen if we divorce. Tell me what you guys think. Not the a-hole. Keep the money. Your wife is the one who had the affair, and whose fault it is that you're breaking up. Not the a-hole. While he definitely wouldn't have given that money to a random co-worker to help them, the reason he gave you that money was because of the relationship you two had together, not just because of who you were married to. If he solely wanted it to be used to help your family, he would have just included it in his granddaughter's inheritance payment. It was left specifically for you. You choose what to do with it. It's not your fault that your wife did what she did. Not the a-hole. However, just to be safe, you should start protecting your assets now. Establish an anonymous LLC, with you as the only signatory officer. Then place all of the money in a self-settled spendthrift trust. Designate the LLC as the trustee of the trust, with you as the trustor and the beneficiary. It's all perfectly legal, and your money is now judgment-proof. I discovered around two years ago that my ex-husband had a secret family. He had three kids with his mistress. He had also stolen money from me, which I had inherited from my late first husband. The last few years have been utterly devastating, as I tried to rebuild and protect my children. Prior to this whole mess, my younger kids with second husband used to hang out a lot with his sister's children. She worked a lot while I stayed at home more, so I provided a lot to her childcare. My second husband encouraged me to give up a successful realtor business, and so did she. She knew the whole time about his side piece. She backed off when the whole mess blew up. Now the divorce is finalized, and some, not all, of the money he stole has been returned. She wants back in. She says her kids miss their cousins. She says I shouldn't be petty. I should be a better co-parent. She says that she stayed out of my business, and I shouldn't hold grudges. She says that I need to learn to let things go. She says so many things. She is educated, and I'm not. She doesn't let up. She rolls her eyes when I say no. Is it petty that I just don't want anything to do with her? Not the a-hole. She can ask the side piece to babysit. Not the a-hole. The only reason she wants back in is because you were benefiting her. She was complicit in her brother's betrayal, but she was getting free childcare from the person she betrayed. She is using shame, guilt, and manipulation. And worst of all, she's playing on the emotional health of a bunch of innocent children. She sounds like a vile user and a manipulative narcissist. 
There's no good that comes from continuing to entertain her requests. No is a complete sentence. She says a lot, doesn't she? It's a pity that she kept her mouth shut when you were being double-crossed in such a horrible way. Cut her off completely. Block her cell phone. Why on earth would you want to keep contact with her? Oh, and obviously not the a-hole. 